What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn about an external Python module called Pydentic that has the potential to replace data classes in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so using Pydantic is very similar to using data classes. Of course, the difference is, as I already mentioned, that Pydantic is an external Python module, whereas data classes are built into Python. Also, Pydantic offers more functionality when it comes to validation, and it is also integrated into FastAPI. I have a tutorial on FastAPI if you want to check it out. So it is used in FastAPI for the validation, for the type hint forcing um, during runtime, so it's fully compatible with FastAPI. And there are some benefits, of course, usually we would want to use the core Python module if they have the same functionality. But since Pydantic offers more functionality when it comes to validation, it makes sense to think about using Pydantic instead of just data classes for certain use cases. So let's get right started with some code. We're going to first install using CMD and pip. We're going to install Pydantic. Now I have it installed already. You just type pip install Pydantic and press enter. And once you have that, you can import Pydantic. Now we're also going to import from typing the optional class, um, just because we need to provide some type hints and not every field is going to be mandatory. And if we say something is optional, uh, we signal that we don't need a value for this particular field. And as an example here, we're going to use a simple user class. So we're just going to say user. And this is going to extend here now from Pydantic uh, Pydantic dot base model. So this is the Pydantic base model. And now all we need to do similar to data classes uh, is we provide a field name and a type hint. So the type of the field, and we're going to start with a simple username, which is going to be a string. We're going to continue with um, a password and the password is also going to be a string. We're going to have uh, an H of the user, this is going to be an integer, we're going to have a score, this is going to be a float. Uh, we're going to have an email, this is going to be an optional string. And we're going to have uh, another password, a phone number and a phone number is going to be also an optional string. Now, this already is a data class, basically, so it works like a data class, we can just uh, use use this class here to create new objects. So we can go ahead and say, okay, user one equals and then user and then username equals uh, user one password equals one, two, three, four, five. And then we can say age is I don't know, 20. And the score is zero in the beginning. And then we provide an email, even though it's optional, my at mail.com. And that's it. So now what we can do, of course, since this is like a data class, we can just print here user one and user one dot h, for example, something like that. So this is how it works. Very, very simple. Now, what we want to do here now is we want to validate certain fields. So for example, we might want to say that a username has to be at least five characters long, a password has to be at least uh, eight characters long, and it has to have um, special characters and numbers and or digits and uppercase lowercase letters. And the username is not allowed to contain any punctuation symbols or something like that. So we want to have validators for those fields. How do we do that? Now, first of all, we create the respective functions, or methods. So we can say here, for example, validate, or actually, let's let's call them username underscore valid. And what this function takes here, this is not a uh, this is not a simple method, this is a class method. So what we're going to pass here first is the CLS parameter. So not the self parameter, we're not referring to the object, but to the class, and we want to pass a value. And we add a couple of annotations here. First of all, this is a class method. And also, this is a pydantic dot validator, focusing on the username field, like that. So this here indicates that whenever we set the username, this is going to be called so this username valid and the value that we want to set is the value that we pass here as a parameter. And now whatever, uh, whatever we return is going to be passed to the user. So I think I've not tried this. But if I just return hello every time, and then I just run this, it will always return the username hello. So whatever we return here is going to be what ends up being the username uh, when we set it. 
So the basic idea is that we do something like, and for that we need to import the string module, which is part of the core Python stack. Um, and essentially we can say something like, uh, if any p for p in, um, or how did I do that? We need to see if there is some punctuation. p in value for p in uh, string dot punctuation. So what we do is we go through all the punctuation symbols. And if we find any symbol in that value in that username, we're going to raise a value error and say, username must not include punctuation, for example. And otherwise, we're just going to return the value. Otherwise, we're just going to uh, return the simple value. Now, alternatively, we could also just remove the punctuation and then set the value, but we're going to do it like that. And now what happens is in this case, it works still. And if I now say, I don't know, user dot one, this is going to raise the error. And if I say user underscore one, this is going to raise the error as well. So this is a simple validator from Pydantic. We can do the same thing now for the password, a little bit more complicated or a little bit more sophisticated. So essentially, I'm going to copy all this here. And I'm going to paste it down here, I'm going to change this to password. And we're going to change this here to password. And now here what we want to do is first of all, I want to see, okay, if the length of the password, so if the length of the value is greater than or actually less than eight, we want to raise a value error immediately password must be at least eight characters long. And if that is not raised, we can start checking if we have punctuation in the password, if we have digits in the password, so d in value for d in string dot digits, then we can do the same with l for l in string dot ASCII lowercase. And then u for u in ASCII uppercase like that. And if all these conditions are fulfilled, then only then we're going to return a value. Otherwise, we're going to just raise here at the end, a value error, the password needs at least one punctuation symbol. If that is what this is called, digit, upper and lower case character. That's a long error message here. But that is the idea. And we don't need an else branch here. So that is the simple idea. What's the problem here? Duplicate code? Yes, because I have this code prepared already. Um, but that is the basic idea. So this is how we validate the password in the username. Now we can also do the same thing for multiple fields. For example, we have here the score and the age, and both have to be always positive, you cannot be negative one years old, and you cannot, ha you cannot have a negative score. We're now going to just define it like that. Um, but we don't need to do two separate validators for these fields if we just want to check if they are positive. So what we can do here is we can do again pydantic dot validator, and we can pass age and we can pass score. And basically also add class method and then def number valid or something like that. If value greater or equal zero return value else race value error um, numbers must be positive or something like that. So now we should have some problems with our um, object down here, because if I run this now, we should get at least a couple of mistakes, a couple of errors here, username must not include punctuation, of course, we have to remove that. But also the password must be at least eight characters long. So even if I make it eight characters long, or longer than eight characters, we can see password needs at least one punctuation symbol digit upper and lowercase character. Okay. So if I add a and uppercase b and underscore, then this should be fine. And then it works as you can see. Now I want to do one last thing here, because that is also a different kind of validator. Let's say here, we don't want to have we, we don't want to need an email, we don't want to need a phone number, but we want to have at least one of them. 
So let's say the user can have no email and the user can have no phone number, but the user cannot have neither an email nor a phone number. So it has to have at least one of those fields. Now here, both are optional. So if I just create now a user without email and without a phone number, that is fine because both fields are optional. So both are none and that's fine. If I want to say that they're not optional together combined, we need to use a so called root validator. So I'm going to say here def, uh, let me just see what I call this function here, I'm going to just call it validate phone or mail. And this is also going to be a class method, a class method. So CLS and values, this time plural, because we have multiple values in here. And now we're going to add here the pydantic dot root validator. And we're going to say pre equals true, this basically means that um, we're doing it before it, we're doing the validation before the thing is converted into a model. And then <clears throat> we say class method as well. And essentially, what we want to check now is that one of those fields has to be true, one of those fields has to be set. And if a field is set, it is part of values. So we can just say if email in values, or phone number in values, then return values. Otherwise, raise a value error that says, um, need either email or phone number. If I run this now, need either email or phone number because we have none of the two. If I now set here the email to something at me.com, then it works, even though the phone number is still uh, not set because it's optional. So each field individually is optional, but together one of them has to be true. Um, if I now change this to phone number here, and I say one, two, three, four, five, whatever, it also works. I can also set both. So this is not exclusive, I can also set email and phone number. Um, so me at me.com. This also works, but we have to have one of those two. Of course, we can change the rules however we want, we can also say, okay, if email in values, then phone number is not in value. So exclusive or basically, um, you can write here whatever you want. When you return values, you return values when you raise an error, you raise an error. And that is how you do the validation here. So now last but not least, I want to show you how we can take a JSON file containing information about multiple users and then turn this into a collection into a Python collection of instances of the user class. So into pydantic objects, essentially. And for that, I have prepared this simple users.json file. The structure is quite simple. We have a list and inside of that list, we have multiple dictionaries containing key value pairs like username, password, age, and so on. Now all these values should probably be valid. I hope so. We're going to find out in a second. Um, and we want to take this information here now and turn this into a list of Python objects into a list of instances of the user class. And this can be done quite easily in a single line of code, we call this for example, JSON users. And this is going to be now user. So we use the constructor of the user class, and we're going to unpack an object, you and you is going to be for you in JSON dot load, open users dot JSON. Now, first of all, we need to import the JSON class here, or the JSON module. And now I'm going to explain what we're doing here. So essentially, we're opening a file, we don't need to have, uh, we know, we don't need to um, specify that we're opening it in reading mode, because that's default. So we just open the JSON file, we pass that file stream into the JSON load function, which basically means that we now take from the JSON file, the information, we turn it into a Python object. And in this case, this is a list containing dictionaries. So what we do now for each dictionary, so for you in JSON load for each dictionary in that list, we unpack that dictionary. And this dictionary, of course, has key value pairs that match the field names, and then we have the values. So essentially, this is the same as just creating user and then saying, okay, name or username, 
equals something, password equals something, and so on. So this is how we do that automatically. We unpack the dictionary here in the constructor. And what we end up with now is uh, print JSON users. This is a collection of user objects. So this is how easily uh, this is how you can do that easily with Pydantic. We just unpack JSON files, and we can turn those into Pydantic objects. Now, of course, the validation is still uh, happening. So if I, for example, change this password to one, two, three, four, or something, and I run this again, we're going to see password must be at least eight characters long. So let's change this back. And of course, if somewhere I remove the phone number, and we also don't have a mail, we're gonna um, see that problem as well. There you go, neither email or phone number. So that is a problem. So this is the Pydantic module. I think it's quite interesting. It's not always a replacement for the data class because sometimes you don't need validation. Sometimes you really just need a simple data class. And then of course you should use the core Python module. It's just, it's just more reasonable to use something that's built in instead of using something that you have to install. But if you need it, you might want to use Pydantic. It offers a validation and a couple of other features if you want to get into more advanced stuff. First of all, you can let a comment down below telling me that you want a more advanced video on Pydantic, but also you can look at the documentation. And as I mentioned, this is also something that is used in Fast API. So if you build uh, an API using Fast API, you do the validation with Pydantic, um, which is kind of interesting. And if you know how to use it, that's definitely to your advantage. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.